Guten Tag. Verstehen Sie Deutsch? Ich verstehe ein bisschen Deutsch. So that was a little German for those of you who might not know or recognize that. And I said, uh, hello, good day. And I asked you if you understand German. And then I said, I understand a little German. Language is a big thing in our world. Language, the language we speak, is connected with our identity, with who we think we are. It's connected with um, how we think, how we see the world. It gives us ways to communicate our expression, our thoughts, our feelings. And a lot of times language is rooted in a particular culture where certain expressions, thoughts, and feelings come out of uh, the way of existence in a particular culture. And I want to ask you uh, today, what's the language you speak in your life, in your home? Um, and of course you're going to say American or Spanish or whatever, but I want you to think more deeply about that. What's the way of thinking, the way of existing, the way of expressing yourself? Um, what is at the root of your identity? Is it the language and the way of existing of the world and of uh, just common, normal, everyday humanity of the masses? Or is it of something else? There's a passage in one of the earliest, earliest church documents that we have outside of the New Testament. And he says this about Christians. <clears throat> While they live in Greek and barbarian cities, as each one's lot was cast, and they follow the local customs in how they dress and the food they eat, at the same time they demonstrate a remarkably unusual character of their own citizenship. They live in their own countries, but only as non-residents. They participate in everything as citizens, but endure everything else as foreigners. Every foreign country is their fatherland, and every fatherland is foreign to them. They live on earth, but their citizenship is in heaven. They obey the established laws, but in their home lives, they transcend even, this, even the, the, state's, the state's laws. The whole idea there is that he's expressing that Christians have a, have a distinctly, a markedly different way of existing in the world. So much so that he will say that they kind of play the game of the world, but in reality, their identity is somewhere else. And I will ask you today, as we think about Lent and think about our existence on earth and following Jesus on this earth in our lives, are we living as if we are just a part of the masses of this world and our identity is in old humanity? Or are we living as if our identity is actually somewhere else? A higher plane of existence, a different sort of way of living and thinking in the world. What's the language you speak in your house, in your life? Is it the language of forgiveness? The language of following Jesus? The language that refuses to um, diminish the identity of another person by speaking badly about them, but rather lifts them up? Is it the language of servanthood to your brother or sister in this world, in this life? Or is it the language that demands that you have your rights and people serve you? When we die, we're not going to be American. We're not going to be Democrat. We're not going to be Republican. We're not going to be whatever else this world tries to uh, call us and term us to define us. When we die, we are gods. And so why not live that way now? As we journey in Lent, think about the language you speak in your house. Is it the language of the heavenly kingdom or of the earthly ways? Paul writes about that in Philippians also. He says, our citizenship is not in heaven. 
we don't chase around and do the things like everyone else does because we see a higher calling to life. I hope that you find your higher calling in Christ today and that the language you speak might be the language of his kingdom and not just of this everyday world. God's peace to you today.